So a couple of days ago, Lex Fridman posted a two and a half ish hour podcast video with the founders of Cursor. And I want to talk about some of the key things that I learned as I was going through that video. I think it's important because Cursor is one of those canary in a coal mine tools where you actually can start to see the future of AI coming into how software development and how we build product works. And so obviously, I was curious to hear what the founders think. Let's get into it. I captured six different takeaways that I want to call out that I think shape how we should be thinking about AI getting into our workflows going forward. And my take is they don't just mean engineering here. I think as you listen to what the Cursor team is saying, they're suggesting a democratization of product building that doesn't necessarily mean fewer engineers, but it does mean a wider footprint of builders. So let's get into kind of that distinction and what it means. First takeaway I have uh, is they called out the creativity that we will be able to bring to the coding process. Now, I don't want to hear that engineers aren't creative because that's just not true. Engineers have been creative for a long, long time. But in this case, there's more of a sense of freedom to be creative because a lot of the details of the coding execution will just be taken care of by an artificial intelligence. And so the grinding out of where the last bracket was, the grinding out of making sure that the function calls work, of making sure that the uh, integration is exactly configured properly. Those things we will start to do less of, and the creative part of imagining what we want to build and imagining how to solve it in a creative way, we'll get to do more of. The second thing they called out, I thought this was really interesting, we haven't talked about this as much, is tighter feedback loops. We've talked about continuous deployment in engineering for a long time. What does it mean if continuous deployment gets down to seconds? What does it mean if you complete the work you're doing, it's automatically tested, it's automatically fixed, errors are flagged, and it's you, you get feedback on the build that you're trying right away? That's a different world. That's a world we're on the verge of being able to live in. And I think that's a really thought provoking idea, especially for developers on larger code bases, because it means that we get faster and faster and faster feedback loops going. Third thing I wanna call out is the value of precise prompting. This one definitely has application outside the developer realm. I think learning how to ask good questions of artificial intelligence is going to be one of those gold standard monetizable skills in the 2020s. If you're not already trying it, I suggest starting to try it. And the interesting thing is, as much as the teams are doing a lot of work to infer intent from generic user questions, that goes so much farther when you can be just a little bit more precise than the average asker of questions. Think of yourself as sort of in a question competition with other people who are asking an AI to do things and ask, how can I be a little more precise? How can I be a little bit more clear? And that's definitely one that not just engineers can learn from. Okay, fourth takeaway, they see a move to a no-code environment. I thought this was interesting because Cursor is literally in the development environment space, and they are still seeing that even though coding may be visible on the screen, fundamentally the environment will shift to a focus on the no-code part of the experience because it will be about the intent of the user, capturing the intent in a language that's comfortable to the user and translating that into machine-readable code. What's interesting here, if you're an experienced developer, is that you're not necessarily comfortable programming in English. You're actually more comfortable programming in code. And so your language of comfort isn't English. And that's where I think that widening of the footprint is really significant. What's implied here is that as we get more and more people starting to build code because of the success of tools like Cursor, tools like Replit AI, we're going to be seeing a proliferation of people who feel most comfortable engineering in English. We'll see what the limits of that are. We'll see how far we can go at building large scale systems with that. No one really knows the answer. Certainly it's not true today, but it's something where I think the cursor team is right to call out that we're going to see a shift in UXs toward less code heavy UXs over time. Fifth takeaway, this is one that I certainly agree with. It didn't surprise me, but I, I'm mentioning it because a lot of people would be surprised. The cursor team doesn't see AI even 
in the next four or five years, even as it gets smarter and smarter and smarter, maybe reaches general intelligence level or greater as replacing developers. It just doesn't see it. I agree. I think that the value of a human who understands how to engineer is not necessarily going to go down. I see these tools as augmenting and empowering engineers instead. So they emphasize that, I'm emphasizing it. I think it's really important, not just to make people feel better, but because I think it's actually accurate. It's one of those situations where we tend to look at these new technologies and see the, the worst case scenario, or even see situations where the replacement value of our work disappears. But we don't see the situations where because of that tool, we can do more as developers. We can enable ourselves to build more than we could otherwise. Okay, what's the last takeaway? Smart development environments. Now they've hinted at this already in the podcast when they talked about instant feedback loops and sort of getting a really, really fast deployment pipeline going. But they expand on that here. They talk about how it's really important to imagine your development environment as being as smart as the developer or smarter, where it can uh, come in in the morning and you can call out like, here, these are some of the, the little paper cut bugs I found in the night. This is the things I did to fix it. I want to call out this larger issue that I identified. Like, can you imagine having that world as a developer? It's not just monitoring and alerting from like a data perspective. It's actually your development environment, grooming, cleaning, looking at your code base proactively and surfacing to you, the developer, what they think you should be keeping an eye on. And you can use your own perspective, obviously, but it's going to be like a co-pilot with you. So those are my six takeaways. I, uh, I'm at six and a half minutes here. This is shorter than a two and a half hour podcast. I'm not saying don't listen to their podcast. It's, it's great. You should listen to it. But if you don't have two and a half hours, I hope this gave you a sense of the conversation with the Cursor team. These are the conversations that give us a peek at the future. Cursor's deploying actively. I think it's important to talk about what they're looking at and how the future is being shaped in their heads as they start to build one of the premier AI development tools in the space. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what I missed in the comments.